we see teachings and instructions. You know, actually, this lad who had these teachings and instructions being broken. You know, i.e., you know, this flesh dying and it's, it's, it's being broken. But, you know, what does Yah want? He wants those fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, this word remain is per, perisuo, number 4052, meaning the superabound in quantity or quality, in excess. So this is, it actually speaks of, you know, what's in excess. And the word lost is apolumi, number 622, meaning to destroy fully. From Apo, uh, or Apollo, numbers 575, R, and Olethros, numbers 36, 39, to destroy. So it means to destroy or perish off. Okay, now let's put the symbolism together. And we, we see that he says unto his, unto his disciples, his students, to gather up those that, that are broken to pieces that's in excess that nothing or no one be destroyed or perish. Now, again, we have a picture of those that's in the flesh dying and something is left over after they've died and they've eating the instructions and, and, and um, the, uh, the commandments, the teachings and instructions of Elohim, there's something left over. This is what Yah wants. Because what's left over will be those lads, would be those that was fathered from above. For even as, as uh, we read in Peter, we're born, born from, from the word of Elohim. You know, this is the word of Elohim that they was eating in their flesh, that caused their flesh to die, but caused them to be fathered from above, that i.e. born again in the spirit. So when the flesh is dead and gone, the spirit still remains. And that spirit being that remains is what Yah has his disciples going and gathering. That none shall perish. Is that not word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that not what the word teaches? That's exactly what the word teaches, isn't it? Yes. You know, that's exactly what the word teaches. And he's teaching it here in the symbolism for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. For his students, for those who will be a learner of his. Verse 13, therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the barley, five barley loaves, which remain over and above them that had eaten. So, they gathered them together and they filled 12 baskets. This, this number 12 represents divine government as well as Israel. You know, so within this, we see a picture of them gathering the divine government of Israel. You know, and they're, what are they putting them in? They're putting them in these baskets. This word basket means Kokonos, number 2894. That means a small basket. The Yahoo don't carry these type of um, baskets. They carry their food in and when they were traveling through Gentile countries to avoid defilement. So you have a picture of undefiled Israel being gathered and put into these baskets. Joy? Yeah, it's interesting too. Looking at the numbers, you're right, 12 symbolized Israel. There was a similar incident in a, where he fed a multitude in a pagan country in Matthew 15, and there there were seven baskets symbolizing the church. Well, actually, that, that um, you know, and it was real, real difficult for me not to go into that one. Oh. Um, but, but actually, that one happened in the exact same place. When you when you research it, you know, Beth Bethesda and Bethsaida, you know, are uh, believed to be the same place. Huh. It happened in the same place. He went up on the mountain, but there, it's a little it's a little different. And the baskets, 
just just uh, since we're talking about these baskets, the baskets there, the seven baskets, it uses a different word than the twelve baskets here, because that parable, in that this parable speaks to, uh, it 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 really specifically speaks to to the dead in Messiah that will rise first, that was of that first covenant. You know, but they, these were the people who done over and above what was required of them. You know, they was doing the teachings and instructions of, of Yah, but they done over and above. Therefore, they had some left over. You see what I'm saying? They had some left over. And that which was left over is what was gathered, such as the, 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 uh, the prophets of old, you know, and, and the goodly people of old, you know. Your, your, your righteousness have to exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. You, like the Messiah taught. It's not good enough to just do what you were told. You know, there's no reward in that. There's no reward in you just doing what you're supposed to do. Right. The reward is in going over and beyond what you're supposed to do. That's what you're rewarded for. You know, and this is those type of people. This is those type of people. And the, the other parable dealing with the seven loaves and a few fish, you know, that speaks to straight up Yahshua's teachings and instructions. For, you know, Yahshua teaches us all about the sevens. In Revelation, you just got sevens all through it. Amen? Well, whose revelation is that? Is it not Yahushua's? You know, that's his word. You know, this speaks more so to those who, who die in, in Messiah uh, with just Torah and the testimony of, um, of of Yahshua. You know, because even during, even those of the Old Testament, they knew about Yahshua. He just hadn't came. Mm -hmm. But Torah teaches us about, about Yahushua, does it not? Yes. You know, that's how uh, many other people, the wise men, knew that he was even going to be born. When he was going to be born and went and paid homage to him. You know, it's those folks like that who went over and beyond that will be in this gathering. And the same thing with those that go over and beyond Yahshua's teachings. You know, and when you look, those baskets are different. Those baskets were made from, remember um, in chapter 5 when we went over to Oshir, those, those tall, those tall uh, uh, things that grow up out of the water? You know, that they made baskets out of. You know, that we spoke about representing those that was fathered from above or born again. Mm -hmm. You know, after they crossed over the brook of Zered. Well, that's what the, those baskets in the other parable um, are made from. You know, they're made, they're made from, from, from those type of uh, uh, substance such as that. You know, from the reeds. You know, so, you know, I wanted to go there, but in relation to what Yochanan is trying to bring forth, you know, I didn't want to mess up what he's, what he's trying to bring forth here in the book of Yochanan because this, this, uh, this Samian right here is actually in conjunction to the next Samian, you know. And, you know, I didn't want to stick one in there that he didn't put in there. You know, now this is a very important Samyan. It's the central point of the book of Yochanan. You know, and how it differs from the other Samyans or signs is this is up to this point, none of the other signs are found in any other 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 gospels. But this is found in this one is found in every one of them. And the next sign that goes with it, which will be the fifth sign. It's also found in all the rest of the Gospels. But number, number six, seven, and eight, they're only found in the book of Yochanan. They're not found in the other Gospels. So, Yah is pointing to these, these two central Samians. You know, now, yes, there's an important message in all of them, but the central focus is on these two because they're found in all the Gospels and that's that's just like, you know, putting a spotlight on them. You know, so 
you know, that's all I have for you today. I pray it was a blessing unto you.